everybody, Mike here again, showing the Smithy 1220 LTD. Um, you know, after my last video where I showed uh, putting on the DRO, I've uh, run some operations with it, and uh, let's just say its handicaps are really starting to show up. So, you know, I'm kind of committed to this thing. Um, like I said in my first video, if you got the room, get two separate, you know, separate mills, separate lathe. Uh, the lathe is okay on this thing. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, out of the box, it, it worked pretty good. Uh, the mill, the cross slides, eh, not so much. Uh, but with a little, um, you know, little time, little patience, I actually got this machine to work really good. So, you know, I made some improvements and I thought I'd uh, share what I did and, uh, you know, take it for what it's worth. Anyway, um, you know, one of the big things is getting that backlash out of the cross slide. When I got the machine, it had about 30 thousandths in both axes. Uh, this is where the DRO really helped me out uh, with setting the machine up. Very easy to see it. I actually took everything apart on the machine, uh, polished out the jibs, and uh, just kind of redid everything because there's some hack in there for sure. That split nut for the Y travel in there once you take the the table off uh, that's definitely got some room for improvement there's two screws in there to use to take the backlash out you definitely got to put Loctite on those uh, blue Loctite so they don't back off on you during operation uh, and uh, so I got that 30 thousandths backlash down to about a half a thousandths on the Y and about two a little less than two on the X and um, I really think you got to constantly check that uh, as you use the machine if you want to maintain those, that kind of accuracy. A um, couple simple things that I did: I uh, replaced all the thumb bolt, all the uh, um, all the screws that required Allen keys with thumb bolts. This one's for the mill motor, so I can change speeds real quick. Um, for the Y lockout, I put one in here. As you can see, I got it real close. That's unlocked. That's locked. So during operation, uh, you can lock out the axe. You know, the axis is real easy. Got one for X here. This is actually in a real uncomfortable position, so I put a bigger one in there that I could grab easy. That's locked. That's unlocked. So, you know, during operation, you can lock out that one axis real quick. Um, I got a collet system for the mill, um, obviously, just for uh, changing out tools uh, bits quicker. Uh, it's really nice. Uh, I disassembled this entire setup, and uh, not that you really got to worry about backlash here because it's preloaded, but it was just really sloppy. So now you know I got it where it's it's nice and tight. It's it's a little snug, but I actually prefer it that way. Um, the Allen screw that goes in here it goes into the slot in this for backlash this way I took that out it actually was like grinded rough so I really got a new one and machined it nice to fit the slot and uh, that made this uh, a lot smoother um, one of the things ended up being huge actually this is the uh, bolt to center the mill head uh, when you tighten this down it goes to a flat on the riser there well as you can see I milled two flats on that and uh, now I can get a wrench on there and uh, get you know get it really tight that was just huge it allowed me to cut twice as deep as I could and really almost virtually eliminated any chattering uh, on the on the edge of the piece so that I, that should be standard on the machine to be honest with you um, you know real quick one of the things I want to talk about I have a piece of half inch aluminum viced up here and one of the operations that I do a lot is is I'll have to cut a pocket out of this well doing it the way you normally would you know you run the piece leaving maybe three thousandths of an inch uh, left to cut and then you come back and you do your your cleanup pass well what was happening especially when I was down milling every time I came to do that cleanup pass and I got to my corner I would overshoot the corner when using the uh, the hand controllers um, you can use the longitude lockout there's still you know here there's a lot of backlash in here and the gearing that you really can't do anything about you're actually better off using the uh, 
the, the threading one here that's still at about five thousandths of an inch backlash here but you know when you're trying to do something real accurate into a corner five thousandths of an inch is a lot and actually ruins the piece almost every time so what I did was I made this stop system for the X travel and this just ended up working so nice that I highly recommend doing this if you're you know even just to have it on there for, for whatever you need anyway all it is and this one I made out of aluminum this is a prototype and I plan to remake it out of uh, steel but it works perfectly out of aluminum it's just uh, when I do my tightening here I'm notching you know you can see there's little notches in the edge that eventually will uh, become a problem but anyway the way I installed it this black thing that you see here this is the original shipping mount they have straps to ship that they use these to bolt to the crate well I kept them and uh, I put them on the lathe and I uh, drilled a hole in the, down the center and I tapped some 3 8 threads in it and then um, when I set up the bolt I measured the centers and I made it about ten thousandths off center whether you go big or small doesn't matter um, uh, so then after I bolted it into the piece and then I tapped the piece into the machine it created an interference fit and uh, you know I could basically get it as far away from the machine as I needed and that piece is in there real tight there's no play in it or anything I did it this way so I didn't have to drill any additional holes into the machine so then I machine these slides okay and basically it's real simple I can use the DRO to set up my piece okay and get my edges in in X and uh, then I bring the slide up I tighten this on the one side and then I can come over here and slide this one wherever it needs to be and tighten that up and then I have this other screw here so what I can do is I can set this at zero on the DRO and then before I start my cut I can just give it a turn or two and that'll bring me to two thousands three thousands uh, in from my finished edge or whatever you want and then obviously when I come to do my finish pass I could just back that off watching the DRO and zero it out well what that allowed me to do was never overshoot my edge again and I've run about 25 pieces that I needed all to be identical and every one came out within a thousandth of an inch so um, really really good highly recommend um, this uh, for this machine for the x-axis you don't really need it in the y-axis because that's using a threaded rod system once you adjust that split nut properly and get the backlash out there's no way whether you're down milling or up milling that the mill could ever uh, grab it and pull it so uh, anyway uh, a really good uh, piece to have on the machine you know um I'm going to continue to shoot videos. There's a couple other things I'm going to address on it. And, uh, you know, for what they're worth, uh, these things take this machine, in my opinion, and uh, made it into something that uh, I can uh, create some pretty good stuff on. So, uh, for what it's worth, you know, enjoy.